So I just finished watching The Last Jedi and have been asked to rank it by multiple people. And you know what? I figured I'd pull in Anti-Tracker and rank all of the movies based on both subjective and objective scores. So I'll be doing a top 10 list of all the Star Wars films, including Rogue One and the animated Star Wars Clone Wars movie. While it wasn't the first or the last in ranking, I will be doing The Last Jedi out of order because, well, it's topical and was the inspiration for all of this anyway. Before I get into it, let's take a look at how I'll be rating these movies. The objective score will have three criteria, which is adjusted box office, Rotten Tomato audience score, and the IMDb score. The quote unquote subjective score will include originality, iconic characters, unique characters, likable characters, continuity, social commentary, and action. To break this further down, originality is how original was the movie, what concepts does it add, iconic characters are what you see on the tin, how iconic are they, do they have a lasting impression, unique characters are what kind of new characters are added with depth and nuance, likable characters are how well do we relate to these characters, continuity is well, you know, how well does the story stay in continuity, even according to Disney continuity and not expanded universe, what social commentary is added, if any, and how impactful it is overall, and action is pretty self-explanatory. Since I have 10 movies, each criteria will be rated on a one to 10 ratio and can only have that score once. For instance, if I give Star Wars A New Hope 10 for continuity, I cannot give any other movie a 10. This means the lowest that any movie can get will be a 10 and the highest that any movie can get will be a 100. Now, while I admit that the box office is a bit unfair for The Last Jedi since it's still brand new, Ultimately, it would not have had a profound impact upon the movie's score, neither the objective nor subjective score. At best, in both the subjective and objective scoring, it would have moved it up the line only a few movies, one, maybe two, if that. And we're not talking like third movie in line to the best movie of all the Star Wars series, so not really the biggest impact. Objectively, The Last Jedi is the fifth most popular movie in the franchise with the criteria provided. With a box office of over 450 million, a Rotten Tomato score of 55, and an IMDb score of 7.9, this movie would seem to be average for the audience in comparison to its contemporaries. As I said before though, even if we assume that the box office will exceed all other movies in the adjusted box office, it would only make it the third most popular movie. It would put it in the top three true, but two slots does not make it number one. Now if we add the subjective criteria, which are of course opinions for the most part, the score goes down quite a bit. For originality, I honestly gave The Last Jedi a one. I know this will make a lot of people angry, but there were no new meaningful concepts. I had hoped that once they got unoriginality out of their system with The Force Awakens, they would do something new with The Last Jedi. The honest answer is though, they didn't. I saw a recycling of previous movies in this, including the attack on Hoth and the struggles of a small rebellion. Nothing here was new or innovative. From Poe not listening to orders, to people being chased, to going to a planet where rich people are bad and animal cruelty is frowned upon, to the obvious betrayals that you see coming up, even what they did with Luke really wasn't all that innovative. Wow, a wise old Jedi master who could probably do a lot of good goes to a remote planet to die. Thrilling. And they're doing what everybody is seeing now, all of the garbage politics and being preached to, and it's just frustrating. Look, I don't necessarily care about the politics themselves. It's not something Star Wars is known for, and it's ham-fisted. Just keep it out. With that and everything else, in my opinion, there was no originality here. The next one may surprise you, but when I thought about iconic characters, I do go and give this one a five. Meaning that the characters here are somewhat iconic or middle of the road. Characters presented do contribute to the mythos and society. Now I know this might surprise people, but I think characters like Finn, Poe, and Rey will be iconic and have lasting power. I even think that of Maz. Hell, Rey is iconic right now when we look at The Force Awakens. If you look at the fandom, both women and men, boys and girls, look up to her. I think that those who grew up with the new Star Wars today will see Rey as one of the premier parts of Star Wars overall. Same with Finn. Sure, it's not the same kind of iconic that we saw with Luke, Darth Vader, or even if we look at Trek, we saw with Kirk, but iconic nonetheless. Piggybacking off of that, I also see them as unique characters. Maz Kanata, Snoke, Rose, Finn, Rey, I mean, even in The Force Awakens, they added a lot to uniqueness when it comes to Star Wars itself. They added something we didn't see before. 
I think Finn was pretty unique in the layout and whom he is, even if some of what occurred in The Last Jedi is a regression of his character, but overall this was something in uniqueness for the Star Wars movie, which is one of the reasons that I scored it at an 8. In likability, it really takes a nosedive, 1 out of 10 out of all of the movies. Now spoilers here, so be ready for it, Finn's character is a regression of the last movie. He's back to being a coward even though he went from a coward to a hero in The Force Awakens. Poe is a mutineer that deserves to have a bullet between the eye. They attempt to make Leia look wise and some kind of, I don't know, guru for the rebellion? Or resistance? I don't know, it used to be resistance, now it's a rebellion. This movie just really accents how I don't think that she has a place in the movies anymore, and that's not putting her down. I know that she's passed, and this may be a negative thing to say because it's speaking ill of her, but I just, I think that the movies have surpassed her, that she doesn't add too much to it anymore. Luke is the reason everyone is dying or dead, a coward in his own right. When Kylo leaves to be with Snoke, he just goes into hiding and allows the First Order to rise. He is the reason we are here, by the way. There is no one to like, and before you say it, you can make unlikable, iconic characters that are original. Just because they're iconic, just because they're unique, doesn't mean that they aren't all jerks. And in this movie, almost every one of them is. Continuity? What continuity? The Force doesn't work the way it has historically, and in fact they break their own continuity because look at what they can do with the Force. If the Jedi Masters did what Luke did, they would have won the Clone Wars. Physics and space don't work the way they used to, hyperspace doesn't work the way it used to, and again, if you can do that with a ship, why didn't they do it during the Clone Wars and win the war? Disney has said the Clone Wars and Rebels are in the same timeline as The Last Jedi. You can't tell me that the Jedi Masters of the Clone Wars didn't find the same techniques that Luke did. It is ridiculous. No continuity, one out of ten for sure. So now for the part that... I'm sure everyone who hates the movie is going to get mad at me about, but if we take a look at the social commentary, and again, I know this will make a few people mad, and that's okay, I think there was a lot of good social commentary in this movie. Honestly, this movie scored the highest with a 10 out of 10. Now, not all of it was good. There were some subtle things that I didn't like, and I never would have noticed this if not for the anti-tracker, but if you take a look at it, all the white males are bad guys. Every one of them. Space Nazis, in fact. And all of the good guys? The males of the good guys are idiots. They all make mistakes. And all of the females? Basically, they're heroes that, if they have any flaws, it's just barely. They, they all do the right thing when it's necessary. Now, this was really subtle. I honestly would have never noticed it if anti tracker hadn't brought it up, but it is something to take a look at. And yes, I think it was ham-fisted what they did with the rich people, rich being bad and, you know, animal cruelty, which... We know treating animals is bad, so why, why are we going out of our way for that? But there was some really good social commentary. And what I'm really talking about is when Luke talks about the hubris of the Jedi to assume that only they can have the light side. That things aren't necessarily black and white. That you can be a part of the light side and not be a Jedi. I thought that was an interesting social commentary. We always look at things as good or bad. Most citizens of the United States think that the United States is the biggest, baddest, and best thing the world has ever seen, but there are shades of gray with our country. I also like the commentary about the evil weapons dealers, because, you know, these really evil weapons dealers that are helping out the First Order are also selling their weapons to rebels, the good guys. And it talks about how war is a circle. I mean, I, I really love the thief character, because he says something effectively, they blow you up, you blow them up, world keeps on spinning. This is done very well. Even the good guys who are giving money to buy weapons, that money is being used to help create weapons for the bad guys. It's all just a circle. The only way to stop it is to get out of it. And we see this even in the real world. I mean, it doesn't matter how it happens. They kill us and we kill them only for them to turn around and kill us. I'm sorry, guys. There was a lot of good message here. It's just a shame to me that it was so subtle it was almost hidden behind the stupid ham-fisted moments. But again... I stand by this 10 out of 10, because the messages that they do give, when it's not ham-fisted, are awesome and make you think. The action itself was just excellent, so I don't see many people complain about this, so I'm, I'm not going to belabor that point. 10 out of 10, loved it. And that's really it for the subjective criteria. If we add in the box office, this means that the movie, The Last Jedi scored, was a 46 out of a possible 100. This means that in the ranking of the 10 movies, it's 7th in line with one being the best, the top, ten being the worst. So, admittedly, on the tail end of the movies for the worst themselves. 
Now, even with this ranking, I would suggest the movie to any person who isn't too much of a Star Wars purist can let go that it won't stay consistent even within the Disney universe. And yes, they have some Disney moments in there too. But overall, it's a good movie if you can let go of being analytical and let go of the past. Look at it more as a reimagined. But that's just my opinion. How do you guys feel about this? Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And guys, I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.